So more and more people are asking you to join their Discord and I get it, you hopped in once, it felt overwhelming and you never went back. Well today, I'm gonna cut through the BS and show you everything you need to use Discord like a pro, including some tips and unwritten rules so you don't look like an idiot. And big thanks to Crisp, who is sponsoring today's video, making this all possible. More on them in a little bit. So the easiest way to understand Discord is to break down the main blocks of the platform. Let's start with the very far left, where you will see these icons of different communities you're a part of, and these are called servers. As you join more and more servers, they're gonna start stacking up. So the one thing I would recommend doing is creating folders, and you can do that by dragging one server icon over the other, and then you can then right click that folder and give it a name and even color code them. Then to the right of that bar is the list of channels for whatever server you are currently viewing. And this is the part where new people can feel overwhelmed, and it's often because server owners don't do a good job keeping this part organized. A good server owner will have their channels, which are basically just different chat feeds with different topics, be organized into categories. So taking a look at Elgato's Discord server, for example, you can see that they have channels around general topics in a general category, and then another category called Elgato, and these channels are where you can have discussions around specific Elgato products. Usually the name of the channel makes the purpose pretty obvious, but if you do need more clarification on a channel, when you click inside that channel at the top, there should be a description on what the purpose is assuming the responsible server owner took the time to write that out. The vast majority of channels on Discord are what's called text channels. Unlike Facebook groups where discussions are grouped together really nicely, text channels are much more similar to a chat room. This creates a really fun real-time feel to the conversation, but on the other hand, it can get pretty messy pretty fast if there are multiple things being discussed at once by a lot of different people. When you hover over a message, you're gonna see that you can react to it with an emoji, and you can also reply to that message, which is helpful if you're referencing an older message in the conversation, because it will quote that message you're responding to and give everybody else context. A newer feature which Discord recently rolled out is called Threads, and in many ways it's a much more efficient way to reply to users. This allows you to turn that message into a threaded conversation, and that's all held in one place, similar to what you would see with Facebook groups or more accurately with Slack. You are required to give the thread a name, which I personally think is really annoying, uh, but it's totally up to the server owners which users have permission to even create or respond to threads, which is why you may not see it in some cases. But here's the reality. I'm a member of nearly 30 servers right now, and not one of them do I see people using threads that much. So the key to remember here is that in most servers that you are in, if you're responding to an earlier message in the conversation, use the reply function so we all know what's going on. The other common type of channel you're gonna see in Discord servers are what's called voice channels. And these channels are literally just an open voice line where anybody can hop in and talk. And just like text channels, there can be multiple voice channels with different purposes. If there are other users in that channel, you're gonna see their names listed underneath. If no names appear, then that means that the channel is empty at the moment. And keep in mind that these channels are built for you to engage. There's no way to preview the conversation. So if you click on it, it, you're in. Your microphone is live and everybody else is notified that someone just joined. So if you accidentally did that and you want to hop out, there's a box towards the bottom where you'll see your connection settings and you can click that telephone icon to exit the voice channel. Stepping back for a minute from group conversations, you can also use Discord for more private conversations. See that little Discord guy at the top left corner? That takes you away from all the servers and into your personal home space. Here you're gonna see which of your friends are online, what your recent conversations are with other Discord users and friends, and if you ever hear someone say DM me or PM me, that's all happening right here. And the cool thing is, is it's not just text conversations that you can have. You can also do voice and video calls, either with one person or multiple people. One of my favorite things about making calls on Discord is that they have a built-in integration with Crisp, 
What CRISP does is it uses machine learning to understand your voice and eliminate everything else. And it's wild. Let me show you. So let's say I'm having a work meeting on my laptop and then suddenly my kids come in the room and start banging on the wall trying to get my attention. Well, with CRISP, I can just turn that off and you don't hear anything. I hear all the chaos, but you just get to focus on me. And if, if you wanna hear the chaos, I can just turn it back off and you can see it's still going here. What's even cooler is that you can use Crisp completely free on just about any video conferencing platform like Zoom and Google Meet. You can even have it work both ways. So if you have that annoying coworker on Zoom who you're constantly asking to mute their mic, Crisp can filter out their background noise without them even having to have Crisp installed on their computer or MacBook. Again, it's totally free to use. Took me less than a minute to download and install my computer. And if you wanna download it yourself to try out and use on places like Zoom, I've gone ahead and I've linked to Crisp down in the description below. Now you'll notice under your friends tab, a thing called Nitro. Remember that Discord is completely free for people to use, but there are certain limitations for the more hardcore users of the platform. That is where Nitro can come in. It's a $10 a month subscription that gives your personal Discord extra perks like bigger upload limits, longer messages, cooler looking profiles, etc. And all these perks are attached to your personal Discord account and work in any server that you are a part of. You'll also get to pick two of your favorite servers to boost, which uh, the more boosts a server has, the more features are available for everybody within that server slash community to take advantage of, but just within that server. So we've talked about text channels, we've talked about voice channels. Some servers will have what's called stage channels, and you'll see this broadcast looking icon next to them. Unlike voice channels, which are basically a free for all voice call, stage channels work very similar to Clubhouse or Twitter Spaces. You'll join as a listener by default, and there are people on a stage who are talking and in order to join that conversation and actually talk, you will have to raise your hand and then they call on you. A lot of servers will never use this feature and others will schedule events like this all the time for Q and A's or maybe a conversation with a guest that they brought into the Discord that you can listen to. The fourth type of channel is called an announcement channel. And these are most often one-way conversation channels where you can read and react, but you can't post. The most obvious use is a server owner pushing out announcements to the community, but they can also be used as feeds, such as the latest YouTube video from your favorite creator, or in-stock alerts for certain items, or like what we do in the Tech Audit TV server, every time a deal is featured on our deals website, a notification is automatically posted in our feature deals channel. And notice that green deal squad with the at symbol, that's what's called a role. And you'll often see different role types to the very far right, where all of the community members are listed. Roles are completely up to the server owner, so they're wildly different in every single server. Sometimes they are nothing but a title. Other times roles can have functionality to them, giving you permissions to access private channels or maybe getting certain notifications. A lot of servers will bring you into some type of limited channel when you first join where they post rules and in order for you to get access to the rest of the server, you have to agree to the rules by reacting to that post with a certain emoji and then suddenly the whole server is available to you. That is the example of a react role, which is a role that you can assign to yourself by reacting with a certain emoji in a certain place. Take a look at this server from Nutty where you can react with the bell emoji for announcement alerts and then the Twitch icon for live alerts. In terms of core functionality of Discord, that's really all you need to know to get around the platform and get value out of it. But there are some unwritten rules and tips that you should know to avoid looking like an idiot or worse, getting banned from a server. Number one is download the Discord app for both desktop and mobile. In my opinion, Discord is useless without using the actual apps. Number two is when you join smaller servers, they will often have the default setting of pinging you for every message that is sent in every channel. That's annoying. To fix that, go into that server, click on the name of the server at the top, and then go to notification settings. From there, you can either turn them off completely or do what I do, 
and that is only alert me if somebody mentions me. Which leads me to tip number three, and that is do not at or ping the admins or moderators of a server. Most servers will have this as a rule, but it's just good etiquette. Don't ping them unless it's an emergency in the server, which it almost never is. And don't reach out to them via direct message with questions that you could just ask in a community. Do not reach out to me asking me for PC advice. Go to the channel on my server where you can ask PC advice and you will get way more people answering. And number four is don't at or ping other members of the Discord who are already active in the conversation. The whole point of a ping is to notify somebody who may be offline that there's a message directed towards them and then they can hop back on. If you're already having a back and forth with that person, you don't need to at them on every single response to them. They're there, they're reading, they don't need the pings. And tip number five is about questions. Asking questions is the heart of every Discord server. Without them, there wouldn't be many great conversations. But do not ask if you can ask a question. Every server hates this, just ask the question. Tip number six is to connect your Discord account with your YouTube and Twitch account if you have them. And you can do this by clicking that gear icon at the bottom next to your name and then going to the connections page. There you will be able to connect to those accounts. And the reason you wanna do this is many YouTubers and Twitch streamers who have community Discords that you can join will often have private exclusive channels that are just for those who subscribe to their Twitch or they are a paid member of their YouTube channel. So these connections will allow Discord to see that you support them and it will then unlock those private channels for you if the server owner already has that functionality set up. If you're new to Discord and you wanna have a safe place where you can ask questions about the platform without feeling like a dope, I have linked to the Tech Audit TV Discord server down below and we have got a channel there dedicated to getting help. Also, a lot of you have been asking what lights I use for that setup behind me. Uh, I did a whole review on these and I absolutely love these lights. So you can check that review out right here in that video. Go watch it, enjoy it, have a good time.